it's going. All right. All right. Well, thanks so much for all of you being here today or for all of you who are watching the recording later on. I send out some emails saying, hey, RSVP. So you'll get an email. Hopefully it'll point you to the recording afterwards. Um, we will record all of these and we hope that the repository of these will be helpful um, to folks as we go along. So welcome to the University Teaching and Learning User Group. We are so happy to, uh, to get this started and going and um, been waiting for today uh, to get here. Um, so happy to be here. Um, I uh, suggested in one of our prep meetings that we probably should be showing this every tech meeting just for a laugh and just to have some fun <laughs> that uh, don't uh, take anything we say as being directly from Tableau. Don't make any investment decision based on what you hear here. Yada, yada, yada. Um, take it uh, as you will. Um, we are just a Tableau user group, even though I'm wearing my Tableau um, biking jersey swag. Um, I don't work for Tableau. Um, and again, as I have mentioned, welcome to our very first ever meeting of the University Teaching and Learning Tug. Um, we are so thrilled to get this going. Today will be a little bit different than what we hope will be our standard kind of format as we get going, but we wanted to introduce you to the format, introduce you to the ideas, and just get the networking of folks started as soon as we can. So we're going to format today's meeting like we would normally in the future, um, but we'll talk about it a little bit, or I'll talk about it a little bit, kind of laying out what we're doing and why, um, which normally in our meetings, we won't do that. We'll just, hey, how's everybody doing? Um, and we'll get started. So if you haven't already, um, throw something down into the chat, who you are, where you're from. Um, and then as we go along, I'll prompt you to jump in the chat and do some things with us. Um, because uh, we didn't know how many folks would be here, and we thought if we turned everybody's audio and video on, it might uh, be overwhelming for us um, with as many RSVPs as we had. Um, but if we find we're a smaller group and we don't have that many, then we may turn audio and video on and, and make it much more interactive in the future. But chat's our interactive tool. And again, while I'm sharing the screen, I can't see it. Um, so again, welcome. Uh, today, I wanna introduce you to our TUG leaders. Uh, um, then uh, our standard format that we've kind of decided on, although it's early, this, this could change. Um, but what we think makes a really good meeting uh, or, or something that uh, I've definitely felt as I've attended user group meetings, I think we should always start off um, sharing a Tableau tip um, and, and, and walking away, hey, I saw something with Tableau. Some, some meetings I go to and I never see Tableau in. And I'm like, let's let's make sure we always show Tableau uh, in our meetings at least once. Um, we wanna share resources. I mean, that's what we really wanna try and do is to share resources. So we want to have someone share a resource every time. And um, we're thrilled to, uh, uh, to have someone from Tableau Academic Program here today. Um, we also wanna make sure that it's not all faculty. We wanna make sure that we always have students involved. And so we'll talk about that and we will always have a student um, from this meeting forward. Um, and then my, my pet project I've been doing for five or six years now uh, has been a professor for the day program where I invite anyone who has some experience and wants to share with the folks that are starting off their careers or getting going uh, um, with Tableau, um, you've got something to share. You can be a professor for the day. So I think we're all um, professors here. So again, who, who are our leaders team? My name is Dr. Kevin Lee Elder. I'm one of your Tableau user group leaders for this group. I am a professor at Louisiana Tech University down here in Ruston, Louisiana. And uh, so I'll, I'm your MC for today. We'll probably rotate through. Um, but you're stuck with me today. Um, Dennis is our head technician today. So Dennis is trying to make sure everything runs and he hit the record. So we are recording. Um, so Dennis, you want to introduce yourself to the team? Sure. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Dennis Cow. I'm a social work professor up here at Carleton University uh, in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. It's really nice meeting everybody. Yeah, so you can see we're not even just a USA tug right from the get-go. One of our team leads uh, is up in Canada for us, so that's awesome. Leanne, you want to introduce yourself as our third tug leader? 
Yes, happy to. Welcome, everyone. It's so great to see the enthusiasm and attendance for today. My name is Leanne Wapit, and I'm a professor in the data analytics program at the Huntsman School of Business. And um, I am excited to learn from all of you and to share what I'm doing in my classroom. And I'm based out of Logan, Utah, in Cache Valley, and um, it's a beautiful day. All right. Well, very good. And Tableau, or I guess maybe Salesforce, made the edict that we can have board leaders, and that's all we can have. Some of the tugs have more leaders than that, but we officially can designate four and get them into our system as four. And you can see it's to be determined. We have not uh, uh, isolated and selected a fourth. We've got some options out there, um, but it could be you. You could be uh, our fourth tug leader, if you are so inclined and, and we meet with you and we think it'd be good to add you to our team, we would we really want to add a fourth leader because we're allowed to. So we certainly want to fill that slot. But we also are allowed to have up to four advisory board folks um, who can give us advice on what we're doing and, and whatnot. Uh, and so again, this could be you as well, or you might have um, suggestions for us along these lines as well. So let's utilize that chat, audience participate time, put your name, put your email, if you have a suggested leader or advisor or someone you think, hey, might be good, so whether it's you or someone else, um, might be somebody we've thought of and already reached out to, might be somebody we don't know yet. Um, so if you have any suggestions, we're gonna have audience participation in the chat uh, all meeting long. So Tug, we can have a fourth leader. We can have up to four advisors to kind of give us some advice, give us feedback constantly. But we're going to open it up to the entire membership. But we can have these official eight folks, um, and we need to fill those. We need to uh, um, we need to have uh, more participation than just the three of us. Um, here's our mission statement. Um, we want to provide a space for university faculty, staff, and students to network, discuss teaching and learning of Tableau. Um, so I had originally uh, thought of us being um, uh, professors and students, tech, but my colleagues said we think teaching and learning is a little bit broader and, and encompasses it. Um, and so I, I, love the, I love our new name, Teaching and Learning. And uh, um, we want to make sure that we're always teaching, that we've got tips and resources and examples, and we're sharing these constantly. And we all wanna be learning. So we are all students, even if we're faculty, we're still students, we're still learning this stuff. We can learn um, every single day. Uh, and so I love that fact. And again, anybody can be a professor for the day. You can be a professor for the day, come in and teach us something. They have gotta be mini lectures for us, but if you want to be a professor for the day at Louisiana Tech, you can have my whole class period. I bring folks in all the time. Um, so uh, again, every meeting we want to have a similar structure. We want to start off with some networking. Where are you guys from? What's going on? Um, but then we want to jump into a Tableau tip. We all have our favorites. Nobody knows them all. Um, and my favorite example of this, I don't know if any of you all were at the Tableau conference in 2019. So if you want to throw into the chat, yeah, I was there. I was at TC19 uh, down in New Orleans. That was one of my favorite TCs. And in IronViz, we had uh, Josh and Hesham and Lindsay Poulter were up there on the stage doing IronViz. And Lindsay Poulter grabbed a calculation and threw that into her dimensions. And the whole 2,000, 5,000, whatever it was, folks said, Whoa, you could do that? I had no idea, including Tableau Visionaries. We're like, wow, I've never seen that done before. That's a Tableau tip. So many people think we all know all these things and we know all this stuff. No, there are so many things in Tableau you can do. We can all learn. Everybody can learn. Everybody can, can be our Tableau tip person that day. Um, to open open things up and talk about Tableau, some of their favorite tips that they like to do. Um, and we definitely want to do that every single meeting. Um, since we are teaching and learning, we want to share teaching resources. We've all got them. We've all got things that we use. We have our favorites. Um, we have lots of resources that are out there. And so today I just thought, well, let's start it off with the Tableau Academic Program. Maybe not everybody is aware of what the Tableau Academic Program has 
a better resource to start with, but then we will start spinning out um, into all kinds of teaching resources as we progress and as we have more meetings. As I mentioned before, we wanna hear from the students. We wanna hear from students, not just faculty. So we're gonna have a slot every meeting and we're gonna fill it from now on with a student um, who would like to teach us, would like to show us what they learned or show us their portfolio or give a testimonial of their experience and, and what it's meant to them. And so we want to do that every meeting, every time we meet. And then, as I mentioned before, professor for the day, anybody can be a professor. We're all professors. We can all do teaching. And I want to open this up. Faculty are welcome to be the professor for the day. Students are welcome to be the professor for the day. Um, Kevin Fleur Lodge is welcome to come be a professor for the day if he wants to. We'd love to have Kev come in uh, and teach us something. So we want to open that up uh, every single meeting. So uh, again, um, a teaching tip is something we wanna do uh, every time we get together. Um, and so uh, we drew straws and Leanne's gonna do our teaching tip for today. Uh, and so let me turn it over to Leanne and I will bring up your first slide for you, Leanne. All right, thank you so much, Doc. Um, and I'm not um, well versed in the text. I'm hoping some of this will work as Doc is sharing his screen. I can also show mine and um, dive into a little bit of the, the Tableau work that my students do. But my first teaching tip is um, the power of AI. I know many of us are in discussion. We're working with AI. We're using our chatbots and chat GPT. But one um, specific teaching tip that I've implemented in my course this semester is to create a chatbot using Poe.com. And if you haven't looked at Poe.com, I'd highly recommend because you can actually select um, a certain um, you can use uh, ChatGPT, you can use Bard, you can use Claude. You can also feed it a personality trait. So in this particular one that I've created at po.com slash vizwiz, I've created the personality traits for credible data, for well-designed visualizations, um, and also just sort of keeping the discussion around data visualization. So my students, um, as part of my course, create a self-directed project. And so they have to use VizWiz or their own um, chatbot to ideate that project and find sources and discuss um, audiences and things like that. So if you haven't implemented um, a, an AI bot and, and a large learning um, model um, tool yet in your, your class or in your own um, work, I highly recommend checking out that resource. And you can look at mine um, at, at uh, po.com slash vizwiz. I don't know if I have the ability to share my screen, Doc. Mm -hmm. Is that- Yeah, not, not while I'm doing it. I can unshare if you want me to, and then you can share. Um, and then I can show maybe on the screen really quick. Let's see if I can share. Hello, let's see. Um, oh, it looks like there might be some access problems um, in terms of granting. So maybe that won't work right now. So maybe we'll- We'll hop back into um, your screen, Doc, because um, I need to do some privacy and security kinds of things. Okay, so uh, apologies, we'll work through some of those, but um, definitely go and check that out. I have quite a few examples where I have students look at um, clustering explanations, some design skills, and they have these conversations with this bot that I've created specifically for my course. All right, so the next um, slide talks about a, a Tableau tip. Um, and I would show um, my my files, and we'll probably find a way that we can share this um, information in the future. But one of the, the concepts that I try to share with my students is taking raw data um, through a web scraping um, application. And I use just data miner, but there are many, many more, and I use a more advanced one um, called Solarium for my advanced course. But for my intro class, I um, take students through the process of using a data scraper and creating a recipe. And in this example, we were wondering about the recent um, publication of the Forbes 400 billionaires that live here in the United States or have US citizenship. And so it's a really great table to scrape. It's fairly easy. 
So we go through that process and we scrape that data using data miner, and then we drop that into Tableau. And at the beginning of my course, I do a lot of wondering and insights and creation to try to uncover some potential um, avenues for students to, to dive deeper into their data. And so this is an example to, from taking data from a website all the way into Tableau and connecting it and then visualizing it. And I have a dual axis map there as a screenshot, but we also do um, several other chart types to answer questions. And the goal here is just to understand the data through a visualization process. And so I have a module that kind of takes care of that. And I would just encourage you, because that's where our students are, are living. They're living in the um, what's happening today data land and um, teaching them some skills to grab some of that data and then use that in Tableau. I also have um, modules where it's very closed, where I provide the data set and I've cleaned it. Um, we also go through some data cleansing for, um, for that web scraping, because um, if you've done some great data scraping, you know that that it gets messy and it's not always that clean. So we go through that process and clean the data too. So I just wanted to give you that tip if you haven't been thinking about that before. Um, it's a great way to really give students an experience with the data from beginning to end. Um, the final slide and the final tip is um, one that if you haven't downloaded this great resource, I highly recommend. When we cover chart types in my course, we use this visual vocabulary by Andy and he and a team of other designers have created um, several examples of these chart types that you can make within Tableau. I have that um, URL in there and I'll put it in the chat so that you can grab that. But it is such a great resource to teach your students. And then, as I like to say, I like to get underneath the hood to find out how things are made from the data source all the way to the end product. And we, we unpack, we get under the hood for a few of those in class. And then it helps students understand, again, what fields are necessary, how data is constructed, and then when they're in their projects, how to find the right data to create the chart types that they're hoping to. So those are my three um, tips for today. I'm, um, I, I will share some files in the future, but um, hopefully you've got something that um, might inspire you to implement in your own classes or in your own practice. Yes, thanks, Leanne. And as you can see up there is Leanne's email address. So I'm sure if you have any questions or want to follow up with her, she would love to hear from you um, and, and share some files and some websites and things around these. Thanks, Leanne. Um, I'm going to go check out Poe over the weekend. Haven't, uh, haven't looked at it yet. So you've given me that uh, push. To, go on, Doc, take a look at uh, uh, Poe. Uh, and Andy's uh, visual vocabulary, people have stolen it and placed it out there as their own many, many times, and it frustrates Andy. Um, so if you would just point folks to Andy's viz um, and use Andy's viz out there, I know that makes Andy happy um, that folks will uh, will favorite that out on Tableau Public and will go and use his site um, because an awful lot of time and work went into putting that visual vocabulary together. Um, so thanks, Leanne. Appreciate that. That's a great example. Uh, of what we want to do every meeting. Um, so in the chat, audience participation time, um, put your name, put your email. If you have a suggested Tableau tip, if you have something you would like to share, say, hey, I would like to share this. Um, if you just want to share in the chat, hey, here's an idea. Um, let us collect these and, and we'll start going through them as, as quickly as we start having meetings. Um, in fact, we might even take some of these and do them outside of the meetings and, and find a way that we can have a repository of tips and places you can go to. Um, would love to hear from uh, everybody here in the chat. Uh, if you have some suggested ideas, um, I have ideas, Dennis has ideas, but I think we wanna make this much more participatory, invite other folks in um, as soon as our next meeting. So jump in the chat. Uh, and um, share that with us. Um, so next we want to transition over to sharing a resource. And again, I'm sharing my screen, so I can't see, but I hope Jessica has joined us. And I hope we can uh, hear from Jessica about the Tableau uh, academic program, um, because uh, it's a uh, fabulous resource. And if you don't know about it, where have you been? 
um, but let's get you updated and let's get you to know that that's there. So uh, um, let me stop sharing my screen. And there's Jessica. Yay. How are you doing? I'm well, and I just want to let everyone know that I am at the Salesforce Indy office with actually one of your peers. So Dr. Uh, Davison, Jason uh, Davison is also with us here. Awesome, um, awesome. He is an academic and advisor, uh, ambassador. So one, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to be here. And I am so grateful for this wonderful tug. I see so many uh, people on here that I know. And if you don't know me, by all means, please reach out. So I'll be really quickly just to share our resources. But before I even share the resources, I do want to kind of give a little bit of a spiel. So one is if you do not know me again, my name is Jessica Lyons, but I go by Jesse. Um, I am the Senior Program Manager for Tableau for Teaching. I am uh, based in Chicago, um, Illinois. And then here is a QR code to my LinkedIn. I love to create partnerships and relationships and network. So if you need anything at all, please use the QR code and contact me. I am available as a resource to you. Um, so again, as you know, our program, you already know this information here, so I won't go over it um, very much. But again, that why we even have our academic programs is because bottom line is we're trying to eliminate that data skills gap. We know that data skills is necessary. We know that uh, data literacy is one of the number one things that's on demand in industry and that industry is desperate to find data related skills and find people to fill those um, gaps. Here's some of the brands that are already using Tableau. Why do we bring this up? Is because your students can find jobs. So I didn't even put in data skills, but I also put in just Tableau so you can see all of the different jobs that are there. And we know that, again, these data skills are necessary. The thing that I wanted to kind of talk about today also was the state of education today. And with this new data intensive world, we know that it can be difficult to navigate, which is why we have our academic uh, programs. I wanted to just, just touch on point a little bit with SAT. We know that SAT has 12% of their sections, even that are non-math related, actually have to do with data. So we know that students are coming to you and they are not getting data skills. They do not, they're coming into the class without those prerequisite skills. So again, we know that there is a gap there. And we know that it's not just about wanting to become a data analyst. We know asking questions, considering data, analyzing data, critical thinking, and interpreting data are all important components. So here's our programs really quickly. So we have Tableau for teaching, Tableau for students, and we actually have data kids. So Tableau for students, just so you know, full-time students 16 and older. And if we have any teachers in the room that are in K-12, if you are teaching two students that are under the age of 16, you can always request co course software and you can use the course software to teach or Tableau Public is also available to you. But anyone that is a full-time student that is 16 years or older receive Tableau Prep, Tableau Desktop, and e-learning, and if they want to get certified, they get 20% off on that. What are we asking them to do? We are also asking educators to do a couple of things for us with these students. Have them join community, community, community. Why is that important? Is because we know that we cannot be the everything to them. We cannot supply them with everything, but the community is a great place for them to network. They can continue cultivating their skills and learning. And so there's student guides, they have community projects, there's data quest. We also ask them to practice, practice, practice. That is something that we've seen on lots of surveys that students are learning in the classroom, but then when they leave, they're not using the data. So having them practice. So having them actually, um, you know, join these different community groups, use our community projects like Workout Wednesdays, Makeover Monday. Um, there's Viz for Social Good, one of my favorites, are all in there. So having the students actually join community um, and also just continue to cultivate their skills. Show it. Please have them build a portfolio, right? I can only go back to my days when I used to walk around with a thick old um, 
uh, like a binder <laughs> to show yeah, a portfolio during my interviews. So I had this thick portfolio, but now they can use a QR code and they can show it instantly on their phone and they can get the best business and showcase those immediately. And it doesn't have to be just data. It can be their resume. It could be the research projects they can do. It's tons of things that they can do to show it. And the last thing is prove it. So they can also get certified. And that's where we give the discount for it. Um, the other piece I just want to build on the prove it piece is that it's another opportunity in Credly. Someone can uh, type in their name and all of their credentials will be on there as well. So it's them not just saying I've taken this courses with my transcript, but then also they're getting the certification and it's opening up the door for the market. But we know that teachers have to adapt. We know that data skills is big. And so demand is so high that the opportunities for data skills are on, all over on campus. So what does this mean? The reason I was happy to come here is that there's three calls of actions that I am asking for before I go into the resources is upskilling and reskilling for educators and that says teachers, but it's supposed to say students, but educators and students. So student learning opportunities programming, uh, workshops, clubs, career service, anywhere that students can actually learn and also embedding it Tableau into the classroom. The other piece is educator workshops. Let's get real everyone on here. Technology is moving so fast as an instructor myself. I teach psychology. Sometimes I am feeling vulnerable and overwhelmed. Like, do I know everything? Am I really learning everything in order to prepare my students? So again, if we could just network, and that's why we have the tug where we can continue, but just think about your local community and in your in-house in, in your own university, can you be providing educator works, workshops? There's great resources. I wanna call out Dr. Dunaway from Morgan State University. She's a Tableau champion for her university. And she's, as a matter of fact, today, the accounting department is doing a, a educator workshop for Tableau. The other thing is programming and real world experiences. Students need the chance to practice. They need the real data sets. Um, we're asking for you to work with industry and we can help with that. Research symposiums, presenting research using Tableau, and then data thons and competitions as well, which is why I'm in here now with Dr. Uh, uh, Davison at Butler University. And then the next one is advocacy and awareness. So embedding data skills across your campus, ensuring that the labs have Tableau, um, the undergrad or program requirements, be a campus champion and showcasing your work. And the big thing is showcase your work. Let us know what you're doing. We want to get other people to be aware of everything that you're doing, your conferences, your publications, the lunch and learns, and even today with Professor for a Day. So with Tableau for Teaching, what I'll do is I'm going to actually go to the website. If you can still see my screen, uh, can you still see this okay. website? So this is the Tableau for Teaching website. Everyone on this call, if you are an educator, you can request an individual license. Please make sure that where it says link to it academic uh, research profile. If you do have a web page or a profile, please put that in there. If not, you can email and like, I'm an adjunct. I am not on anyone's um, website, but what I can do is I can send my uh, contract or I can even send my, my page and I can, they'll give me a license that way. The reason for that is because when you request an individual license, one, it gets you access into the user group. Two, you get e-learning. That's something that people forget is you get free e-learning um, as well as you get Tableau Prep, which I, is one of the most slept on resources. I love Tableau Prep and then Tableau Desktop is available as well. Then you also have access to request course software. So these are where I was saying lab licenses. If you're doing one-off training, so as an educator, if you just wanna expose people, they're not sure if they wanna do it. If you wanna do a one-off training, you could do lab licenses. Um, student bulk keys, that is where this is at. This is where Tableau Desktop, where you can give an access code to all of your students for the duration of their course. And then Tableau Cloud. Tableau Cloud is a collaboration website and it is web-based. So if you have Chromebook users, this is the best way to go is with the Tableau Cloud account. And again, it is a web-based. And then lastly, you can always use Tableau Public as well. But that is our different ways that you can get course software. From there, the other resources, as I talked about, is the user group, which is you. 
So you get access to the user group and there's a forum page in there where there's resources where you all can talk to each other um, in addition to ready-made course curricula. So when you are in the user group at the top of the page, there's a pin where you can request access to our curriculum. Right now, the AI, which I um, love that uh, Leanne was just kind of discussing that, but that one is open to everyone. So you actually don't have to. So the AI fundamental short course, anyone can download and get access right away. But the rest of these are all and they housed in Canvas or you can import them in whatever LMS system you have and then import them in that way. But here's our ready made curriculum. I want to point out one, this Tableau desktop fundamentals. That is a great way to practice to get certified or use this to help your students get certified in Tableau. The other two that I'll kind of mention is Data Literacy 1 and 2, especially if you are interested in training other people or getting other people across campus that like educators who are not familiar with data literacy and need a little bit of skills. This is a great curriculum as well. So those are our resources um, to share. And I thank you so much for your time. And I'll just stop there. I didn't want to take too much of your time because I know you have a lot of goodness happening today. But thank you so much for the opportunity to introduce myself. Uh, thank you so much, Jesse. I really appreciate you coming today. And I can see we need to do a follow up, I'm sure. We need to bring you back again another time and maybe delve into some of the curriculum modules and and I can bring them up in Canvas if you want to. And yeah, look at how easy this was to import these things into Canvas and here's some built in assignments and things and then you could tweak them to your own uh, interest. But yeah, you 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 provide so much that's out there. And again, I thought this would be or actually yeah, uh, Leanne, Dennis and I all thought this is the best resource to start with that the academic program site and and the licenses and the curriculum and the network that you all provide. Um, we want to make sure everybody knows that from day one in here. And like I say, I bet we could do a whole year of inviting you back and digging into this more. But um, we really appreciate you coming today. Absolutely. And it's so great to see. And I just can't help but just look at everyone in the room. Look at how far we've come. Remember the Instructor Advisory Council and look at where we are at today. I am like so stoked and excited about how far we are. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I definitely appreciate you. And I hope to be back. And like I said, we can definitely delve into those. And I do know that Ari um, is working. We have a lot of changes that are happening, um, but also um, with that being said, we can come back and delve deeper with our lunch and learns for the curriculum pieces. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And also, yeah, you bring up a good point. We do have um, a whole cadre of academic ambassadors for Tableau that uh, um, half of them are faculty and half of them are students. And we definitely want to incorporate those folks in what we're doing as well. So in the chat, if we have any Tableau ambassador, academic ambassadors, pop yourself in the chat so we know you're there. We'd love to see if anybody is here. Um, but yes, thank you so much, um, Jesse. Appreciate it. And um, yeah, we, we will have you back. I have uh, no doubt. All right, I want to kind of transition here and I'd like Dennis just to kind of uh, talk, if you will, Dennis, about the student component that we want to have every uh, every meeting. Because I yeah. think it's important for us to incorporate students. So right. um, before I even go back to the slide, let me just not, not share yet. And um, if you could just talk about student involvement, because we really, really want student involvement. Yeah, so the intention of this is teaching and learning, right? So. Um, I think many of us are probably faculty or instructors, um, um, but I think we're also interested in the learning part as well. And so the, the extent to which we're all learning, right? And I'm glad to see Jessica. I've gotten a lot, I've learned a lot being, you know, because Tableau provides a lot, especially with the, you know, the access to e-learning and things like that. And that's how I was able to ramp up my skills uh, for the past, I, I only discovered Tableau three years ago. so. I've been using Tableau for about three years and was able to wrap up my skill sets around Tableau um, really quickly just because of the e-learning and having access to the software and things like that. So uh, definitely take advantage of that. I saw a couple of comments in the chat in regards to needing to ramp up 
because you're going to be teaching a class. And so um, definitely take a look at the Tableau for Teaching website. Um, so this is really, this, this space is really intended for, we really wanted students to have an opportunity and space to, to kind of share either their work, you know, um, like, you know, if there's any data visualizations they would like to share, uh, maybe their experiences in learning Tableau in the university, um, good or bad. Um, I think would be interested in, in knowing and getting student feedback. And so I think this is really more a pitch. Um, if you have a student in mind that might be interested in doing a presentation, and this is a very, as you can imagine, very relaxed environment. Um, hopefully it's a very relaxed environment where a student might be interested in sharing their work and presenting um, something that they learned, or maybe they have a tip. Uh, like Doc mentioned, maybe ha they have something that we can learn as well as faculty on how to better teach Tableau or things like that. Um, this is the space for that. Um, and so please communicate with us um, either through the chat or even um, between meetings. Let us know if you have a student in mind that might be interested um, in, in presenting during this space. Yeah, definitely can't uh, reiterate that enough. I mean, that's something that we that we uh, that we've been talking about. Uh, that uh, we want to make sure that we uh, um, we include students. This is teaching and learning, and we want to uh, um, to uh, include students. I know some of my students are uh, uh, are here today, uh, sitting in, uh, seeing what what uh, what's going on. What is what is Doc doing besides the time that he uh, he spends in the email? Um, so I think I forgot a slide. I didn't put a slide in here for the audience participation. Um, but uh, um, if you have a suggested resource you'd like to see, um, or if you would like to see more from Jesse, pop that into the chat. Let us know a, a resource or something you'd um, you'd like to to see us take a look at or line somebody up. Um, or, or maybe you're looking for a resource, <laughs> pop that in the chat and we'll see if we can find that. Um, and again, as Dennis said, if you know of a student um, or if you are a student, <laughs> you know, pop that in the chat, let us know um, and, and definitely follow up and contact us. Um, for the next meeting, uh, I'll make sure I'll, I'll have one of my students or Dennis will have one of his or Leanne will have one of hers um if if uh, if it comes to that but uh if we have someone else we'd love to to uh to open it up and, and let students every meeting um share with us their their view uh of what we are trying to do uh as academics so really really appreciate that all right let me get back in here share share the slide deck all right so now i want to transition to uh, professor for the day. So please contact me. Again, uh, I do this for my own university and my own classes here. Um, I bring professors for the day in and give them a 50-minute uh, uh, slot uh, in my class to teach the students what you wish somebody had taught you when you were sitting there as a student or things that you have learned along the way. Everybody has something to, uh, to teach. So you can do that with me. Uh, through uh, through my university, but we also want to expand it here to the tug. Now, for the tug, we can only give about a 15 minute uh, uh, slot to give a mini lecture. Um, but uh, um, my my hope is that folks will see that and they'll go, "Wow, look at that!" And maybe you'll contact um, that person to have them come into your class, or maybe you will uh, um, yourself go out and find it because. I know my students love to hear from folks in industry. You know, it's nice to hear from you, Doc, but it means so much more when we when we can bring it in um, from uh, uh, for industry. So I'm doing this more for the recording, so folks watching the recording can pause here. I just threw up a, a couple of eye charts here because I just wanted to get you all thinking about this. That that it's a great opportunity um, to expand our courses when we bring somebody from industry in with their own interests, their own backgrounds, and what they can teach and how they can augment what we are trying to do in the classroom. Um, so here are some of the folks who have uh, come into my classroom over the last few years um, from Tableau Visionary Carl Alchin coming in and teaching Tableau Prep. 
I didn't have to get spun up on prep. I brought Carl in and Carl loves to, to spin you up on Tableau prep and show you what you can do there. Um, uh, Harry Lambert came in and talked about moving to the cloud and what an effort it is to move from the, the desktop to the cloud. Um, from Cox Communication, he did a great job with us. Um, I've even brought in, oh, Tableau, you know, Alterex folks to talk about the fact that Tableau doesn't live by itself, right? Tableau interacts with lots of other systems out there. And I'm sure folks would like to see and learn how Tableau interacts with other partner companies out there, other platforms. Um, so I, I use Alteryx in my advanced class and I bring them in uh, to team up with Tableau. And it makes a really powerful duo bringing those two tools together. Not to say we couldn't do it with Tableau Prep, but I, I, I really love um, Alteryx as well. And sorry, Tableau, in a Tableau user group meeting to mention other companies, but you, Tableau partners with so many. If it's Snowflake, Databricks, I mean, there's just so many opportunities to, to work with other folks. Um, I love sports. So you'll see Citigroup out there. Robbie Mystery, one of our Tableau visionaries, longtime Tableau Zen master came in and we talked sports analytics and careers in sports. And we did a lot of uh, soccer talk, right? For you in America, but in the rest of the world, it's football. And he's with uh, Manchester City, New York City, um, had a really fun time um, opening up my students' eyes to the whole world of sports and that there are teams out there doing all of this. Um, in fact, Lindsay Poulter, who I mentioned before, she went to work for the New York Mets. I'm like, oh, Lindsay, that's got to be so much fun working with the New York Mets. Um, so I got to bring Lindsay in as a prof for the day. Um, I've gone international and brought in um, folks from Microsoft talking about Microsoft training that the uh, uh, that are out there because we've got to run Tableau out on the cloud and, and getting used to Azure is a good tool for the kids to have. Um, I brought in healthcare workers to talk about COVID and working from home and, and a CIO to talk about how hard that is to allow folks to work on uh, things from home, how we keep the security going, all those kinds of issues. I've had a number of consultants come in, as you can see, uh, on the uh, list, uh, let me go to my second uh, page here. Um, I had uh, um, Katie Fontenot Wagner come in when she was working with waste management just to talk about people analytics. I mean, that's an entire course, but I gave my students a day of it. Here you go. This is what they're doing in HR with people analytics. Um, Anna Keesting is a great resource. Um, and she came in and, and showed us some health dashboards with health data in them and what's going on there. Um, one of my former alumni is, was a major general in the Air Force, Major General Rodney, um, came in and gave the perspective of trying to use information from the C-suite as, as a strategic tool, um, which was a fun um, professor for the day. So again, I wanted to spark your ideas to think, wow, who might be a good professor for the day? Um, should I do this in my class? Why don't we try it out? And so I want to have many lectures from professors for the day for every meeting from now on. I almost got one today and I thought, no, let me lay it out. Let me spark your interest and, and hear from you all what, what you might bring in there. Um, Christian Felix, who now works for Tableau, came in from Roach and, and talked about um, dashboard development for end users. Christian was was great, and he's a fellow U of A alum. I love to see my U of A alums out there. But uh, Christian went on uh, to win uh, Iron Vids, uh, and he came into my class and talked about dashboard development for end users. What you need to do when they're when they're not so data literate. How can you bring them up to speed? Um, one of my students uh, went to work for a government uh, organization, GovStrive. And she was one of my first students to become a data scientist. And so she talked about transitioning from being a data analyst to being a data scientist. So again, just wanted to, for those watching the tape or for those of you here, go back and watch the tape, pause it here and, and just think about, wow, what could we do? How could we bring in more folks um, to be a professor for the day uh, to, to, to get some of these other tangential topics that are really important for our students to hear and, and think about. Um, and, I, and again, my goal would be to create a repository of these. Um, faculty could use these uh, video tapes 
uh, in your class uh, to get students uh, interested in the idea. If we keep them to 15 minutes, I'm not taking up too much of your lecture time uh, to, uh, uh, to bring in other folks. So again, audience participation, throw in there um, your name and email. And, and if you have a suggested professor for the day or a suggested topic that you would like to see us do, I'll, I'll go find someone for that topic. If you don't have a suggested person for that, I'm, I'm sure between Leanne and Dennis and our TB determined folks, um, we can find somebody uh, to give a mini lecture on that topic. And again, my, my ultimate goal, I'd love to see all faculty, all courses everywhere, bringing in professors for a day into your programs and expanding. Um, I can just tell you from my own experience, my students um, love to hear from those industry folks, love to see what's going on, real world um, examples and things. And so it, it, uh, I, I often joke um, at my previous university before I took a sabbatical in industry and went to work for JLL for a while, my best course I ever taught, I taught the first day of class and then professors for a day, the whole rest of the semester. And then I taught my last lecture on the last day and my students just raved about that course. Um, and that's where many of these folks that I gave as examples were folks that, that came in and, and taught in that class. So it's a, it's a, a uh, topic near and dear to my heart. And I'm, I'm so pleased that uh, Leanne and, and uh, uh, Dennis think it's a, a good idea for us to do many professor for day lectures in here every um, session. So at our next meeting, um, we will have a uh, professor for the day, which is a good time for me to segue to our next meeting. Our next meeting will come up pretty fast. Uh, I guess it's about six weeks or so maybe. Um, our next meeting we've slotted in to be December 8th in the same time slot, noon uh, uh, Eastern, 11 o'clock Central for me. Uh, we will have our next meeting and you'll get a good example. We'll have a full slate for you that day. Um, we'll fill each of these typical uh, roles uh, that, we, uh, that we have uh, on our uh, agenda every time. And so again, audience participation, do you guys have some questions, some suggestions, some feedback? Um, we'd, uh, um, we'd definitely uh, love to, to hear from you. And like I say, if we don't have uh, a couple hundred folks on here, uh, we will uh, we'll turn audio and, and video on in one of these meetings and, and make it uh, uh, real interactive, but uh, if you have any questions or, or suggestions or, or feedback for us, throw that into the chat. Uh, I've got to find out how we can grab this chat, Dennis. So let's make sure we can grab the chat uh, and, and get that so we can pour through it. Because again, while I'm sharing the screen, I haven't been able to see the chat. So uh, I'm looking forward to see any suggestions, ideas that you all have. Um, and and uh, all of us look forward um, to hearing from you. Uh, I don't have a slide, I don't think, so I'm going to throw my email address into the chat um, because I don't think I had that, or if I did, it's long gone. Um, if Dennis and Leanne, you want to throw your email in there, we'd love to, to hear from you. Um, we'd love to, to uh, um, uh, have mass participation from folks as much as we can. Um, so I'm going to shut up now because I'm talking too much. Uh, Dennis, Leanne, do you have anything to add or, or anything uh, uh, to share that you've seen from the chat or, or whatnot? Um, let me just toss it to you, you two. The, one of the things that I, I think we're still trying to figure out and talk, consider is creating some sort of mechanism for all of us to network with each other and actually connect and and share resources um we're just trying to figure out kind of the platform and things like that so um just keep an eye out like we'll try to create something where we can whether it's a linkedin or slack or, or something like that we're trying to figure out the platform where we can actually all of us kind of network and you can join and opt in and then and and just you know connect with people directly because i know Obviously, this is not a great mechanism to do that, um, but we're going to try to create something like that. 
And I would just add that many of you have shared in the chat your location, but maybe you could also share your industry. What are you interested in? What are you using your data for? And it could be just personal, but you might be in the healthcare industry. You might you know, be teaching in social um, spaces um, like uh, Dennis does. And so while you know, um, both Doc and I, we teach in an analytics program, um, many of you are probably teaching in very specific programs. And it's great to know the <laughs> wide variety of spaces that we all reside in. Um, and teaching is good teaching is good teaching, um, but there may be a chance to even dive into a vertical to talk specifically if there's enough participants about, hey, how do you teach um, the accountants, right? What's an accounting professor of the day? Or how do we make sure and create individual dashboards for certain audiences? So if those are topics that you're interested in that are more aligned with your vertical um, industry, we would love to hear about that. Um, and we want to make this as robust as possible. We need you, the community, to help us be successful. So super excited for, um, for, for you attending for today and or watching. Um, we can't wait to, to grow with you and to grow, um, grow the community. Yeah, that's that's a really great point, um, Leanne. That definitely, um, yeah, we're we're kind of in the college of business, and so yeah, we we got that nail. We got we got Dennis over here with social work, which uh, um, I don't know how many faculty we have in social work, um, but Dennis is also our map guy that we can go to for maps. On my list, you saw Sarah Battersby, who's another map person that's a go-to for me. Um, but just in three years' time, Dennis has has really um, taking the tableau, really done some fabulous work. Um, and uh, you should check out uh, Dennis's Tableau Public page if you haven't already. Um, but uh, again, would love to hear ideas that you have. We may do a Tableau Server Day or a Tableau Public Day or a Tableau Cloud Day. Um, we could do an Accounting Day. We could do a Healthcare Day. There, there's just so many options. Um, we, we have some ideas, but we'd love to hear from you. Uh, and keep this conversation going uh, and, and keep the networking and sharing going in between the meetings. Um, I think our initial plan is to have a couple meetings in the fall and a couple meetings in the spring. And then I've, I've volunteered if no one else wants to, I'll, I'll do a meeting in the middle of summer when everybody's off vacationing. Um, just to, hey, let's keep our, you know, fall's going to get here real fast. What's your plans for the fall? Um, we'll, have a, we'll have a summer meeting just for kind of fun. Uh, a summer meeting, but that's that's our initial idea. Um, but if we get tons of ideas, I don't know. We may we may end up being monthly and, and have a monthly meeting. Um, but uh, hopefully, we can get a platform set up and, and get the get the uh, um, discussion, the sharing of resources, someplace that we can place things or at least place the links that everybody can go to stuff. Um, it's it's definitely on on our uh, agenda. Um, but if you have ideas and suggestions, we'd love to, to hear from everybody here today. Um, so again, we cannot thank you enough. Um, this has been a long time in the planning and in the works. And uh, um, I'll speak for myself. I'm, I'm thrilled to, uh, to have today come and go uh, and get this thing going. And, and I'm going to be thrilled for December 8th to, to have a full meeting um and and four uh, folks talking on those four different topics uh at our next meeting uh look forward to seeing you all on uh, december 8th so with that i really appreciate uh everybody's uh, attendance again we're going to try and grab the uh uh, grab the chat uh, so I can look through there and uh, Dennis and, and Leanne can also look through there, get some great ideas. Uh, we've got to schedule a meeting for the three of us and uh, uh, we got to find our fourth uh, leader and uh, find some advisory board members. And um, we, we, uh, we got big plans. We got big ideas and let's, we'll take them step by step, um, baby steps as we go along. But uh, um, I'm really excited for today to be here. Um, I hope today has been beneficial. I hope you have a better idea uh, of what we're doing. And, and I hope there, there's many of you that uh, are ready and eager to participate because we really, we really want your participation uh, above all else. So thank you all for being here uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, to seeing you all back on December 8th.
Um, and again, uh, check out the recording for anything that we zipped by. Um, and we'll definitely get Jesse back because we need to dig in more um, to what the academic programs do for sure in the in a future meeting. So thanks all. Appreciate yeah. it. Have a good good uh, rest of Friday and a good weekend. Bye everybody. Happy visiting.